A lack of financial institutions has become a major challenge for smaller towns. Allendale, South Carolina, for example, has had more than 1,500 bank branches closed in a span of just four years. Professor Richard Wolf he says it's a symptom of national economic decline in which the rich protect wealthy enclaves in big cities and selected suburbs. He joins us now via Skype to expand on this. Professor, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming back on. Thank you. Glad to be here. Absolutely. So take us a little bit behind this phenomenon. What are you seeing? What does it really tell us about the economy as it's currently structured? Well, I think the best way to get at it is, is historically. When societies go from a relatively egalitarian distribution of wealth and income to a very inept egalitarian one, which is what's been happening in the United States over the last 40 years, what you tend to see is that the folks at the top who amass enormous wealth want to live in the same place as San Francisco, New York, Chicago, et cetera, et cetera. They gather with one another. They want all the fancy restaurants there. And you have a kind of hollowing out of the rest of the country. We've been seeing it with the Midwest, with the rust belt. More and more, what you're seeing is the movement of people with money to where the money is and congregates. And that leaves rural America as an increasing backwater the banks are closing, the right. supermarkets won't locate there, and it creates even greater divisions uh, between rich and poor, which then become urban, rural, and all the rest. Yeah. Well, and it's part of the, the Walmartization of America, for lack of a better term, where you have these massive corporations um, eating up all the economic activity in a town, whereas that wealth used to be local shop owners who, you know, lived in the community, who prospered from the business that they were doing there and had a direct relationship to their employees and some loyalty to the town. Now, you know, Walmart comes into your town, all the wealth that's being generated there isn't going to your little town. And it's getting sucked out, and workers are just being exploited by this massive corporation. Exactly. And the accountants or the bean counters, if you don't want to be nice to them, uh, they're figuring out where the money is. And the minute they don't get the adequate business in that town, none of those linkages you mentioned operate. And they simply close that bank branch or close that store and move somewhere else. And if you have the the concentration of purchasing power more and more in the hands of a few who live in the chosen areas, which, by the way, all complain about gentrification, which is the same phenomena inside the city, then you can understand that we're becoming more and more like the countries we used to visit and marvel at how important one or two cities were and how completely different and less developed the uh, hinterland, if you like, uh, was, and we're becoming that kind of a society. Yeah, Professor, I want to get your opinion on something that's been going on across the country. We see smaller rural towns who have decided to come together and ban dollar stores. They say that dollar stores are able to come in, drive everybody out of business, and they're able to capture that market, and that ultimately that leads to a lack of, you know, perishable goods and other stuff for the local community. Do you think that that is, a, you know, kind of an effective fix to the problem? There's a big debate on this right and left and actually within the left. Well, I think... It What's interesting, and it goes back to what Crystal said a moment ago, you're seeing a kind of reaction. Partly that's very good in the sense that local communities are recognizing that they're losing uh, the fresh fruit, you know, the dollar stores, it's all packaged, processed good, not good for your body, it's not good for the community. I mean, all of those things are true, and they're banding together and they want to do something. So far, so good. But if all that they can do is banned, then the question is, what in the world is going to replace that? And have they made the commitment to find the resources to rebuild a genuinely local economy? It's doubtful that small communities, especially poor ones in rural areas, can do that without the help of a national uh, movement in that direction. And that's precisely what wealthy people who move to the cities do not want to help uh, develop and do not want to pay for. And so you have, again, the forces of division overwhelming the rationale for a, for a development that is in some sense even. You know, it's an old idea, criticism of capitalism, that it develops unevenly, that it makes one area rich and another one poor, and that, that sometimes it changed place. But even when they change place, the poor then become developed 
and the formerly well-off ones decline, and you have this imbalance as a kind of continuing phenomena, even if the particular people caught in it vary in their position. Mm -hmm. Well, and even in the, the chosen wealthy places, it's not like things are all hunky-dory. Uh, you mentioned gentrification, but, you know, people who come to these areas because that's where the wealth is and that's where the work is, it's very much a two-tier um, type of situation. Housing prices become astronomical. It becomes very hard for a working-class person to be able to survive, even in those places where there is a lot of wealth and prosperity, at least for some. It's the same phenomenon, exactly right, it's the same phenomena. Let me give you an example here in New York City where I live. It's becoming impossible for middle class, so-called, let alone working class poor people to live in this city. The rich are colonized more and more, not just Manhattan, but out into the boroughs more and more. And the result is they want lots of people working in the fitness center, in the coffee shop, cleaning their apartments, doing their work, and those people can't afford to live nearby. So that working people are pushed out by gentrification, have to go further and further away, have to use up more of their time and money to pay for expensive commuting back to the places where they work. You have the division of rich and poor, but it is at the expense of the middle and the bottom yet again, even within the city. And then you see the same thing between the city and the suburbs. It's, it's part of the broader, disintegration of community that has always been the consequence of greater inequality in the distribution of, of rewards from the economic system. Yeah, such an, such an important issue. Thank you for highlighting it, Professor. We really appreciate it. Thank you. My pleasure. Absolutely. All right. We'll have more rising for you after this.